Well, hey, church family, how is everyone doing today? You're all looking good, looking well. It's a great day. The weather's good. It's good to be in God's house, isn't it? Good to be in God's house. Well, I want to welcome you today. My name is Heath Montgomery, and my wife Tamara and I are the lead pastors of Horizon, and we just want to welcome you today. And I believe God has something good and new and fresh for each and every one of you. If you're a guest here today, we just hope you feel welcome and uh, are having a good time already. But let's welcome our online church family as well. Hey, online. Wherever you're at, hey, online. I want to invite you as well. If you're watching this online, but you've never been here to Horizon in person, I want to invite you to come. There's a lot of friendly people here. Would you agree? A lot of friendly people. A lot of friendly people. And come and find me. I'd love to give you a hug and a high five and see you in person. But God bless you for joining us today. Well, church, we are in a great season here at Horizon Church. We, we had a great March. We had record Easter and uh, 85 people give their lives to Christ on Easter. We jumped into a new series. Is that amazing? Yeah, 85 people. And um, yeah, we're in a new series called Jesus People. And what we've decided to do here after Easter is just to jump in to learn from God's word what it means to be a follower of Jesus. What do Jesus people look like? What do they act like? What steps do they take in their life? And so I want to read this scripture, a couple scriptures. So buckle up, as my daughter Gabrielle said, buckle up. We're going to dive through some, some of God's word. I'm, I'm going to read it here quickly. But really, this is the mission statement of who we are as Jesus people. Uh, it says, this is right after Jesus rose from the dead. He walked on earth for 40 days, appeared to many, many people. It was no secret that Jesus had risen from the dead. Uh, it says in Corinthians, I believe, that Jesus appeared to a group of even 500 people at once. So Jesus was around. He was making his resurrection known. He says this before he ascends to heaven. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I love this. I underline it and highlight it in my Bible. Jesus said, I will be with you always. Jesus, people, that changes everything, doesn't it? That Jesus is with you and available always. Let's jump to Acts. Acts is a fun book of the Bible. You all read that? That's an exciting one. Jesus said this right before he ascended to heaven. He said, you will receive some power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. In other words, we will reflect the glory of Jesus Christ to the world. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, then it gets real fun. The Bible says that on, on that day, Jesus ascended to heaven. Like, beam me up, Scotty, like Star Trek, right, you know? How many of you would love to have been there that day? That would have been pretty incredible. So he ascends into the sky, and this is what happens. The Bible says the disciples were checking Jesus out, and, and a cloud goes in front. Uh, it says two, it says suddenly, two men dressed in white stood beside the disciples. Who do you think this could be? That appeared instantly dressed in white. I would say they're angels. They said, men of Galilee. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So they're just like in awe seeing Jesus ascend into the clouds. And they say, men of Galilee, the angel said, why do you just stand here looking into the sky? And it's kind of where I got the title of today's message. I'm going to change it up a little bit. But today's message, Jesus people, is called this. Don't just stand there do something. Don't just stand there, do something. This is a good time to just slap your neighbor and say, friend, don't just stand there, do something. Turn to your second choice on the other side and say, don't just stand there, do something. Well, here's what I know as I've been following Jesus now for 30 years since I gave my life to Christ, 31 years actually since I gave my life to Christ, is that following Jesus, life with Jesus, is an adventure. If you follow Jesus, you follow the teachings of Jesus, you have a relationship with him, Jesus people, life is going to get exciting. Would you agree? Yeah, life gets exciting. And as you read the Bible, 
life with, with Jesus was always exciting. I thought, you know, you look at the story, a lot of things happened around the Sea of Galilee. There was a time where Jesus told his disciples, he said, hey, go ahead and get in this boat. Start going across the Sea of Galilee. I'll join you later. And the Bible says, then a huge storm came up. They were scared to death. Did Jesus know that was going to happen? Yeah, but life with Jesus is an adventure. And so then what does Jesus do? He shocks them. He walks on water in the Sea of Galilee, goes out there. And then Peter, he, he, Jesus says to Peter, hey, why don't you walk on water too? And as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on water. And then Jesus calmed the storm like life with Jesus is an adventure. I love the story where a blind man was yelling at Jesus when he was walking by. Jesus, heal my sight, heal my sight. What does Jesus do? He walks up to him. He goes, oh. he spits on the ground. I was being really careful because you guys are in the fir first row. So he spits on the ground. He stirs it up and wipes mud in the brother's eye. And then he says, hey, go and wash. Well, that's an adventure. He sent him off on an adventure to get his eyes healed. And you know, people of Horizon Church, Jesus people, I believe that God has also called you and me to live this incredible adventure that Jesus has for us. And here, I want to change up the mission statement uh, of Horizon Church a little bit. I want to align it with Matthew 28 and Acts 1. And here's what I believe the gospel would say is the mission of the church, our mission as Jesus people, if you can put this up for me, our goal and mission as Jesus people, Jesus people follow Jesus so that they become more like him. See, God wants us to become more like him. And they join Jesus in his mission on earth that all would know him. Isn't that so true? That our, uh, our mission in life is to know Jesus in a greater way, disciple others, and make him known not only in Reno, Sparks, Fernley, Carson, and beyond, but over the entire earth. I also love this, that God wants to use ordinary people to do extraordinary things. My daughter and I, a week ago, we watched the Jesus Revolution movie. Have you all seen that movie? Man, it is a cool movie. And uh, it explains what happened in the Jesus movement of the 70s. And I love that time and time again in the Bible and beyond, that God shows us that he can take ordinary people and do extraordinary things. He could take a foul-mouthed teenager, mailbox-smashing fool, and do something positive with him. God can take ordinary people, do extraordinary things. And guess what? We're all ordinary people, and through us, God wants to do extraordinary things. It's a good time to look at your, your friend next to you and say, hey, ordinary person, God can do extraordinary things in you. Well, what's the key? What's the key? Why don't you, we put our hands on our heart really quick. I just want to invite God to speak to us today. So God, we give you the praise today. We give you the honor. Lord, we thank you that this is a holy moment, Lord. This is a, an opportunity to encounter you today. And so Lord, we thank you for the worship today. We thank you for the word. And Lord, we ask that you would just speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Change our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here's what I love. We're going to talk today about steps we take as Jesus people because I believe that every time we take a step towards God, we actually experience more of God. Every time we take a step towards God, we experience more of him, more of his presence. And so I want to talk about three, uh, three ways that we can step towards God today as Jesus people. And it's really all taken from this verse in 2 Corinthians, a couple verses actually. And we're going to break down three points from this verse, but it says, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the spirit, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, repeat this with me, there is freedom. How many of you want some freedom in life? So, so all of us uh, who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord, and the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Well, what three steps can we take as Jesus, people? If you're taking notes today, the first step is this. We can step into a deeper relationship with God. How many of you would say today that you, you could just really benefit from a little deeper relationship with God, a little more encounter 
with the living God. And I love, it talks about the veil. So I want to dig into this for just a second in the Bible in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. It says, whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Well, what does that mean? Well, I love talking about the resurrection, Jesus dying on the cross, raising from the dead, but there's something that happened in the Bible that you might or might not know about. It talks about it a little bit in the book of Luke, but the Bible says that the moment Jesus died on the cross and breathed his last, three things happened. Do you know what those are? Number one, there was an earthquake. The earth shook, which is so cool. Like, what is up? Jesus breathed his last, an earthquake. The Bible also says in one of the Gospels that there were some people who were dead, like in their coffins, and they came back to life. It's historic. Is that amazing? Sometimes I've wondered, you know, God, why, why when Jesus died did he also raise people from the dead? I believe it's because the life and death and resurrection of Jesus is what brings us new life. And God couldn't resist. He sent a supernatural sign that as Jesus died on the cross, people just sprung up all over town. Can you imagine? I, I would have loved to have been there. The third thing that happened has to do with the word veil. Veil. In the temple there in Jerusalem, there, there was a temple that in the Holy of Holies, it was guarded by a thick curtain. And I've read that the curtain was very thick, like the size of a phone book. Does anybody know what a phone book is? Anybody remember what that is? Very, this big, thick thing that couldn't be torn. But the Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, that this thick curtain that was about 60 feet tall was ripped because before that time, only the high priest could go in and experience the presence of God one time a year. The average person could not go into God's presence. But when Jesus died on the cross, it was a supernatural sign to all people, all mankind, for the future of humanity, of planet Earth, that everyone had free access to the presence of God. That means you, and that means me, that we have access to the very presence of of God. Isn't that amazing? Church, have you ever had an encounter with the presence of God? Have you ever had an encounter with the presence of God? Some of you probably would say yes. Some of you would maybe say, I don't know. But we all have the opportunity to have an encounter with the presence of God. I like to say it this way, that every moment holds the possibility of an encounter with the presence of God with the living God every moment. I remember the first time that I encountered the presence of God and I was 16 years old and I had gone to this summer camp with my friends, church camp, and I came back with a relationship with Jesus and I was just different. I didn't think the same, talk the same. I was full of life and uh, I did something. I, they, there used to be Christian bookstores back then. I don't, we have maybe a few Christian bookstores. It's more online now, but I went into a Christian bookstore and I bought a one-year Bible and uh, then, I, then I really got into Christian music. And before that, I was pretty much like Guns N' Roses, baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I like Guns N' Roses. I like Metallica. I like the stuff. So I got a one-year Bible. God had changed my life. And I, I found this Christian band. And this is a true band name. But it was like metal Christian 90s. The band was One Bad Pig. Has anybody ever heard of that band, One Bad Pig? Just my wife and I. Anybody else? They were huge. They were a huge success. But, but I remember in that house in Tucson, Arizona, that it was the first time that I really encountered the presence of God. And I would go into my bedroom there in my house, and I really could just picture it so clearly. I was reading through this one-year Bible as a 16-year-old, and sometimes I would just blare one bad pig in my bedroom. And you know, sometimes I would just, I, would, I was experiencing the presence of God, the spirit of God in such a powerful way that I remember just worshiping the God outright, just encountering his presence and feeling peace and feeling joy that I had never experienced before. Well, Pastor Heath, what is your point here? Does that mean that we all have to start listening to one bad pig loudly in our bedrooms? No. But what it means is that if I, as a 16-year-old, could experience the presence of God in my bedroom. 
just in that moment, just giving God praise that each and every one of us can encounter the presence of God in every season, in every situation, as you're driving to work, playing some Christian music on the radio, giving God praise, God can transform your situation and you can experience the presence of God. You can encounter him anytime, anywhere. And church, that is good news for you and for me. Would you agree? What good news. You know, it's amazing that every time we encounter the presence of God, it changes the trajectory of our day. Every time we encounter the presence of God, it changes the trajectory of your life. Every time we encounter the presence of God, it tra- changes, that's a really a tongue twister right there, <laughs> changes the trajectory of your situation. I love, there was a guy um, in the 1600s, his name was Brother Lawrence. He wrote this book, I think it was called pra- The Practice of the Presence of God. And monks did not have the most exciting lives, I don't think. And in fact, most of this book, he's washing dishes and he's spending time with Jesus in this book. And I want to read you a quote from Brother Lawrence. It's, it's a famous book, um, and this is in the 1600s, but he said, the more we know him, the more we know God, the more we will desire to know him. As love increases with knowledge, the more we will know God, the more we will truly love him. We will learn to love him equally in times of distress or in times of great joy. Let us occupy ourselves entirely in knowing God. And I love this with Brother Lawrence, that his entire life was just dedicated to being able to experience the presence of God in every moment, in every situation, even when he was washing dishes. Number two is this, as Jesus people, really God has called us to take a step into the life of freedom. Isn't that a good word? I like the word freedom. God wants us to step into freedom. There's a verse here, 2 Corinthians 3.17, as we were looking at that. The Bible says, for the Lord is the spirit, and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In other words, the byproduct of having the spirit of God in our lives is that we get more free. We get more full of the Holy Spirit. We get more free in life. Can you throw up that Jesus verse there that I have set you free? This is what Jesus himself said. He said, so if the son sets you free, you're going to be free indeed. Church, I want to talk about freedom just a little bit today. The The Lord's put the word freedom on my heart. And it's something I've been praying over us today. But I really believe that in our lives, God wants to set us free. He wants to make us different. We don't come to Jesus and then leave the same. God's always peeling layers off of us. I kind of picture our life as a Christian, like, or as a Christian, is, is like an onion. Have you ever peeled an onion? There's like that outer layer that you peel off. And to get to the part you actually want, you have to kind of peel off layers and layers. This is kind of how I view it. This is what Shrek said. He said, onions have layers. Ogres have layers. This is what Pastor Heath says. Onions have layers. Christians have layers. Would you agree? Yeah. Like... Like God, as we give our lives to Christ and we submit all areas of our lives to him, we say, God, you can have that, you can have that. He's peeling off layers. Pastor Tamara said something funny to me last week. We were driving around and uh, she said, you know, Heath, Pastor Tamara's my wife, by the way. So she said to me, she said, you know, you're a lot softer than you used to be in your 20s. Now, she wasn't talking about my physical physique. That's not what she was referring to. Like, you've gotten soft. <laughs> she, she was talking about really my heart. And it's really true. Over the last 20-some years, God's taken my, my cynical heart and he's smoothed it out. I'm not so cynical anymore. He's taken off some of the words that I speak, the cutting, harsh words that I, I used to say. I used to really think if I thought it was true, just say it, which wasn't really life-giving and hope-filled, Right? And the Lord's just continued to peel layers off. And as we allow the Lord to work in our lives, the Lord peels off the layers and reveals something beautiful. And the problem is, so often we don't have the right definition of freedom in our culture. 
And what culture thinks freedom is isn't what God says freedom is. So this is the definition of freedom that the world has. Um, The world thinks freedom is living with no boundaries. The world thinks freedom is living with no boundaries, which is basically the Vegas lifestyle, okay? Living life with no boundaries. They say what happens in Vegas? Vegas. Is that true? No. No, it's not true at all. That's that's kind of a lie, that that sin always over-promises and under-delivers. So freedom is not living with no boundaries. Sometimes people in our culture think that freedom is living in my own boundaries, in the boundaries that I've set for myself. We hear a lot, live your truth. Well, if we were all living our truth, guess what? There is no, there's no truth at that point. So we have to uh, understand God's way versus our way. And so much of the Christian life is determining, God, what is your way in my life? Because I don't want to live my way. But sometimes Christians think, well, I'm going to live life my way. And I'm going to have the best life if I live my life my way. It's like the Burger King life. You know, my way right away. Well, Christianity is not Burger King Christianity, okay? (laughs) How many of you have tried living life your way and it didn't work out so hot, right? Yeah, try it. So what do we do? Pastor Heath, what is freedom? How do we take steps? By the way, let me read Galatians 5.19 tells us the fruit of living the world's way of living that way. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. That doesn't sound like a lot of freedom. So I want to go back. What is real freedom? The Bible says that freedom is actually living in God's boundaries. And when we live in this environment that God has called us to and the choices that God has encouraged us with, that then we will uh, bear much fruit. I was throwing fruit out at you a couple weeks ago if you were here. Free fruit a couple weeks ago. But this is what, as we plant ourselves in God's house, and we, as we plant ourselves in God's word, there's a verse in Psalms that says, those who plant themselves in the house of the Lord, in the soil of the house of the Lord, they will flourish. They will flourish. And I don't know about you, but I want to flourish. I want to flourish. I want you to flourish. This is what the Bible says is the result as we plant ourselves in God's boundaries in the house of the Lord. Galatians 5, through 23. It says, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And I would say only the Holy Spirit can produce this fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace. You know, you can work really hard to get peace in your life, but you can't do it in your own strength. Only God can bring peace in your life. Fruit only comes by the Holy Spirit. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Church, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm not who I used to be, and God has made me a new creation, and he's made you a new creation. God has a purpose and a plan for you and for me, and here's what God put in my heart for us today. At the end of the service today, I'm going to give each and every one of us just an opportunity because I really believe that, that some of you might feel a little, I would call, dry spiritually. Maybe it, there were times in your life where you had moments and encounters with God, And you had your one bad pig moment, praising God, feeling close. But there are times and seasons where we need a fresh encounter with God. I like to say in my life that I need to keep my testimony fresh. I want God to do new things and fresh things in me. I don't want to rely on just the things from the past. But God wants to give us an encounter with him. God also wants to bring all of us freedom today. Well, Pastor Heath, what do I need freedom from? What's holding me back? Well, I would say it this way, that we need freedom from the thing that if it wasn't in our lives, that we would be living a greater life in Jesus, that we would be taking steps more joyfully, more in love with him. And you know, it might be anxiety, it might be hopelessness, depression, discouragement, financial things, whatever it is, 
but God wants to bring us freedom. And you know, there's one who can, be, who can really bring freedom. Do you know who that is? It's God. It's Jesus. It's the relationship with him. We want to plant ourselves in the house of God. Step number three is this. As Jesus people, God wants us to take a step into his mission. That God wants us as Jesus people to join him in his mission with reaching people all around planet earth to love one another, encourage one another, and make people disciples of Jesus, spreading the good news. I really believe that the church is different from every other organization in the world. The church, really, we are a family on a mission. We're a family on on a mission. We're different. We're loving one another. We're praying for one another. We're encouraging one another. We have groups starting this week. Well, why do we have groups starting? It's because we live different as followers of Jesus. We're, we're really committed to loving one another and praying for one another. We have a, um, I lead with, with Pastor Ben and Ron Hartfile, our, one of our drummers. We lead a Chick-fil-A breakfast group. And I give this example that we gather there together on a Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. at Chick-fil-A because we are Jesus people and we eat chicken together. Praise God. <laughs> I'd say Christian chickens. We eat Christian chickens together. <laughs> and, and we read the word together and we encourage one another. And in the context of family, God does incredible things as we plant ourselves as Jesus people in the house of God. And, you know, I love being a part of this house because God has a place and a position for each and every person. And as we plant ourselves in God's house, the Bible says that we flourish. I want to read this verse in Ephesians. And band, worship team, you can come up too. But I love this. There's a place for everyone in God's house. Ephesians 4.16 says that he makes the whole body, God makes the whole body fit together perfectly. That's us. All of us people with our flaws and all our things that God in the church brings us together. So each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's the church. Do you know that Jesus told Peter, he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church gives hope to the world. It's the light of the world. The church is different than the Elks Club. I don't even know anything about the Elks Club. Do you? But I have a feeling that the gates of hell would prevail against the Elks Club. I'm pretty sure. But God has something different. And Church, I want to share my heart for this body for just a moment here. You know, as the church grows, the church has really been growing. And um, just new people, new families. It's really exciting, an exciting time at Horizon Church this season. But who are we called to be as the body of Christ? The church is different. And we are called to love and to give and to serve and to lay our lives down for one another. We're called when, when one of our fellow brothers or sisters in the Lord falls down, we're called to help them up, be an encouragement. We're called to be different. And you know, sometimes in Western culture or maybe in North American culture, people treat church like it's, it's a restaurant or it's a theme park or it's a movie theater. And what I mean by that, if I go to a restaurant, I don't want to serve, I wanna be served. Are you with me, right? If I go somewhere and they bring chips, and they're free chips, I am eating through those chips, and then I am banging on the table, another, another, bring me to serve me. I have come to be served. But that's not the way the church is. We're called to serve. Can you imagine if you were at a restaurant and the waitress or the waiter came out and said, hey, the chef would like you to go in the back and help prepare the meals? What would you say? I'd be like, no thanks. No thank you. And now there's these restaurants, some of the restaurants that you pay more and they bring you the food and you have to cook it at your table. I say no thank you to a restaurant like that. No. Our whole culture at church is different than a restaurant, that we are called to love one another, pray for one another, bring peace to one another, speak life-giving words to one another. Can you imagine? This is why sometimes at church, 
You know, after the, uh, the worship time and the prayer, we turn and have you, we say, hey, find someone around you, give them a high five, say, God bless you, be friendly to one another. Can you imagine if you were this summer, uh, you were there early at the theater to see the new Mission Impossible movie, right? And before they start the movie, the manager comes out and says, hey, bef before we start the movie today, can everybody stand and go th greet three people that you don't know? Wouldn't that be weird? Yeah, what if the manager said, hey, find someone around you and tell them, hey, you're looking great today. If it weren't for you, I'd be the best looking person at Mission Impossible today. <laughs> That'd be weird. It's because the church operates different. We operate as Jesus people different than the world. And here's what I'm excited about. I'm excited in the days ahead at Horizon Church that God is going to do incredible things in you and through you and through this church that God takes ordinary people and does extraordinary things. And I am excited for the days ahead of what we are going to accomplish here in Reno, here in Sparks and beyond around the world, giving hope, being the light of the world, speaking life. And my prayer is for you and me that we're gonna encounter God in a fresh way. My prayer really is that as you leave church today, you're gonna feel like you encountered God in a new way. And this week, when you get up for work tomorrow, you're gonna to have a moment with God when you're driving to work, wherever you're going. And my prayer is that the same Jesus that came, died on a cross, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, that, that you would be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit and you would step into your best life in Jesus because Jesus came to set you free, to set you free indeed from all the things peel the layers off people that god wants to set you free so here's what we're going to do um, this morning before we do the prayer time i'm going to in invite you all to stand and i really feel like it was on god's heart to have the worship team lead us in this song so i want us to just come into agreement today we're going to speak the name of jesus over our lives and over each other and then we're going to pray and invite god to do something in us today here we go here we go Come on, church, we're gonna make this our declaration. This is our prayer this morning. Let's sing this out.
close your eyes with me for a second. Maybe you want to lift your hands or put them out. And we're just going to invite God to speak to us today. Before we, we do this, before I offer a prayer over everyone today, maybe there is someone here today or several of you who maybe would not consider yourself a Jesus follower, not a Jesus person. But God's stirring something in your heart today. Maybe you're just feeling something and you're going, man, I don't know what this is. Well, it's God is what it is. And God's calling you to be a part of the family, to be a Jesus person. I believe that God loves you. He died for you, gave his life for you, and he wants to make you new. You can pray this prayer with me. We're all gonna kind of pray it with you as well. But if that's you today, if you've never given your life to Christ, this is your opportunity. Dear Jesus, I thank you for coming to earth, dying on the cross, paying the penalty for my sin and my shame, raising from the dead so that I could have life and life abundant. And Lord, I, I need this life that Pastor Heath is talking about today. I want to be a Jesus person. Jesus, I want to follow you and I want to know you. So Jesus, come into my heart today in this moment. Change me, make me new. In Jesus' name, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I just want you to kind of slip up your hand and give me a wave. Did somebody pray that prayer today? Oh, good. I see that hand there. I see some hands on the side. Church, can we just give these a hand? Kind of looking in the middle. That's good. Here's my second prayer. Close your eyes for a moment, church. Jesus came to set you free. He came to, to encounter you and so that we could have relationship with him. And it's where uh, we have relationship with him and encounters with him that we live this life that Jesus talked about, life and life abundantly. Like where Psalm 20 uh, in the Psalms, where it says that we will flourish in the house of our God, that, that the, the Lord will peel off the layers and will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness in us. The Lord came to set you free. And so I wanna pray this prayer. Maybe there's some of you today who just need a refreshing with the presence of God, need encounters with the presence of God, this prayer's for you. Maybe you need freedom in some area. It might be a mindset, might be anxiety, might be fear, might be depression, might be financial breakthrough, might be your health, whatever it is that you need freedom in. On the count of three, I just want you to slip up your hand. We're gonna lift all our hands in faith and we're gonna pray together. Are you ready? One, two, three, slip them up. Hands everywhere. So God, we thank you that you are a good God. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful and true and that in you there is life and life abundantly. And so, Lord, I pray for every hand in the building today here at Horizon Church. Lord, I pray today that you would give us encounters and moments with you and opportunities, oh God, where we would say yes to your presence and yes to relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you would just bring a refreshing in our lives. Some of us may have not experienced this type of refreshing in many years, but Lord, I pray that it would be fresh and new and dynamic and exciting and an adventure with you. Lord, I pray for freedom. The word is freedom today. Lord, you came to set us free and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And here we are in the house of God and the spirit of the Lord is here. And I say, be free in Jesus name. Lord, areas in life, mindsets that need to be broken off. Lord, I pray that you break those mindsets off in Jesus name. Lord, I pray that things from the past that are holding people back, those would be uh, traumas from the past would be broken off in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that joy would arise. Lord, I cancel off depression in the name of Jesus and send it to the cross. Hopelessness, anxiety, you're broken off in the name of Jesus. I send you to the cross. Lord, I pray that hope, love, and peace and faith would arise in this place. Lord, I pray that you would set your people free in a new way. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in this house and in each and every life here in the building and online. Lord, I pray that as we step out of here today, Lord, that there would just be a newness in our step. Lord, a freshness over your people today. God, we give you all the praise. Let's thank him now. God, we thank you in advance for what you're doing here today. In Jesus. You know, I believe that this morning, this afternoon, that God did something in so many of your lives, and it's so important just to tell him thank you. Can you do that? Just say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. I think we have a little bit more worship in us, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But if you raise your hand to say, I want to give my life to Jesus, I want to invite you 
uh, to head out to the connect area in the lobby. There's going to be people there that are going to help you uh, with your next steps in your relationship, in your walk with Jesus. Also, uh, right after this at 1230 is Growth Track. We want you to be uh, a part of that. We want you uh, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. So at step three, we're learning where you can serve at Horizon and what that looks like. And then finally, I want you uh, to worship. We're going to worship through tithes and offering. And you're going to say, what's, what's the tithe thing and worship thing? Tithing is a biblical thing that happened from the very beginning. Matter of fact, Abraham uh, tithed to God. 10% of what came he gave to God. And then Jacob said, God, if you get me through this, the way that I'm going to show that I'm committed to you is through tithing. And then God created a, a, a covenant with his people. And he says, one of the ways that people are going to see this covenant is through tithe, is through the 10%. It was the first way that people established, established that they were submitted to God, that they were in covenant relationship with God, and that they were trusting him to take care of their needs. So I want to invite you today, just say, God, have I stepped into a place where I am committed to you? I'm in covenant relationship with you, and I am walking in faith and trust that you will take care of my needs. And God, I want to do that, God, in my finances and in every area of my life. I want to encourage you with that. But we're going to go ahead and jump into some singing one more time. You can give in one of these ways, but let's worship him through singing one more time. Come on. get prayer go to the connect area and we'll see you at growth track god bless